Welcome. Thank you uh, all so much for being here. Really appreciate it. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm super pumped. I don't know if you participated yesterday's event, but I think the energy is there. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's new that that's, uh, we're trying to build here. Today, this morning, I want to be a little bit more serious, if you guys don't mind. I actually need your help. Put everything aside for 20 minutes. Don't check your phones. Don't check your laptop. Just for 20 minutes. I only ask for 20 minutes. And I, I have a few questions, right? I, I want to... I want to ponder these questions with you. I want to, I want to think about these things with you. And, and for people who knows me, I always start with a, with a story, unfortunately. So I'm getting old, so I tell stories. But um, I was in Sausalito. Some of you might know where Sausalito is. I was in Sausalito with a good friend of mine. I was sitting down in a coffee shop. And we're, we're talking about what drives people. We're talking about what motivates people. We're talking about what we care about. Right? It, it's a very tough question to answer. What exactly drives you? What motivates you? What brings you to work every day? And, and we thought about it. It's a, it's a simple question, you know, if you just brush it over and just say, okay, it's not important. But if you think long, hard enough, and you think deep enough, what exactly do we do anyway? So bring it back to more in the context, engineering. What, what is this thing we call engineering? I mean, most of us here, not everybody, most of us were, were developers, we're coders, we're programmers, we're engineers. What, what exactly is engineering? Ask yourself that for a second. Who, who, who's got a good definition for it? Who can say in like one line what engineering is? Right? There's coding, there's programming, there's one. Yeah? What do you think is engineering? What is it to you? <laughs> Very good. Solving problems, and, and if there are no problems, creating your own problems to solve it. Is that what you said? Good. I like that. I like that a lot. The funny thing is, it, it, ever since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated by problems, very close to what you were saying. When I see something that doesn't work, I try to take it apart. I try to fix it. When I see something needs to be built, I build it. I like anything that's physical. I like anything that's virtual. But if there was a problem, I go in and try to fix it. But, but maybe there is more. Maybe there is something more. Maybe it's an attitude. So I looked up the word. Doesn't come out very nicely, sorry. But I looked up the word, the fondant display on, on a PC. I looked up the word, um, the original meaning of it, where it came from, the origin of it. And apparently the word engineer, I thought that it has something to do with engines, running engines, and so on, right? Apparently, when I looked it up, it has actually more to do with, this was the original definition of it. This was, was what the original people were thinking about when they say engineering, what they were mapping it to was actually really ingenuity, original, creative. That's their definition, it's not mine. And I was very surprised, I was actually very touched by that. I was, this is actually very close to what I think engineering is all about, which is to be clever, to be original, to solve problems, but not just solving, solving with deep thinking, really asking yourself how to solve it. And so I, I, I went even further than that. I try to break it down and I ask myself, I, I need something even more tangible. I need something that's even closer. So I looked at it and I put down a few words. I, I think it's really important. It's, it's, an adju it, it's an attitude. It's questioning everything, right? I was looking at this today. The first thing that came to my mind is, how do they do the transmitter? How big is the antenna, right? How do they manage to build this in such a low power device? Those are the things that came to my mind. I'm sure a lot of you guys would look at other devices when you see a new device has come out. You're like, how do they do it? How do they build it? Question everything. It's an attitude. When you see something, you're interested. It's, it's a, it might be being too dramatic. It's a way of life, really, right? And care and attention, this ties to quality, right? I talked about it last time when I was, when I, when I was here in Kiev. I talked about I have respect for people who can, who can clean well. They pay attention to cleaning. They pay attention to how they make coffee. They pay attention to how they cook. They pay attention to how they make, build cars, how they actually fix cars. I have respect for people who can pay attention to what they're doing. And I think that's really important for engineering. 
that's a key to it. Think, listen, and speak, and share. No one person is enough to actually solve these tough problems. Not anymore, right? Years ago, many years ago, I mean, one person can probably write a whole program and you know, be very sophisticated and so on, but even that, seldom you can find anything new coming out of it if you don't have two or three people get together and actually exchange. When you have three people get together, yes, you would get conflict for sure. You would get a lot of arguments, but what happens is new things comes up. It's almost like life. When you have three or four people come together and try to exchange and try to solve prompt together, something new pops up. It's not the same old thing. I noticed that for myself, if I hide in the garage and code myself, I'm always coding a certain way. I'm always coding a certain way. But then I bring it out, somebody else use it, or I actually go to another engineer and I exchange it with them. There's new life injected to it, right? But you have to ask yourself why. You can't just build for the sake of it, right? I, I agree with what you're saying. It's just really true, which is a lot of people create problems on their own and try to create it. But, but I think what really matters is, I, I call it my mom test, right? I remember my second startup that I did, I built a handheld device in a Hitachi 6301 processor. And when we shipped the first 50,000 units of it, I brought it back to my home and I showed it to my mom. And I said, mom, here it is. You can touch it. It's real. It's a device. And she looked at it. Ha ah, ha, very good. Okay. But that was real. That was real because it touched the user. Somebody actually find it useful. We can, we can all build amazing software. We can all write amazing code. But until it's used, there's something missing. Until it's useful to somebody else other than yourself, it feels like maybe we're not contributing. Maybe we're actually not contributing. So there is something very critical about a respect and a connection with the customer. And when I say customer here, it could be another engineer because you write, could be writing an API, right? Another customer could be your partner because you write, might be writing a module for him. A customer could be a paying customer because you might be building a module for him, right? And please, don't settle for less. I'm going to say this out loud. This is the best software engineering company in the world. I will say this, and I want you to know it. And, and do not settle for less. There is absolutely no reason. In, uh, I don't know if you ride motorcycles, but there's a very simple rule in motorcycles, right? Wherever you look is where you're going to end up. If you look down, you're going to drop the bike. If you look straight forward, forget about what you worry about, look straight forward, that's where you're going to go, right? So keep your eye on where you want to be, not where you're worrying about. And hard work, we all know this, right? I'm sorry if anybody actually like, lied to you or they didn't tell you about it in school. Software engineering is a lot of work. And it does not, does not get easier. It's more and more and more. Different levels, it changes, but it's still the same, right? You're learning new languages, you're picking up new platform. It's not gonna get easier. That's the best part. That's what forms self-respect, I think. Now we're getting into something even juicier, I think. Now if I, if I might even try to touch this. So what is excellent in software engineering? Now we're talking about not just meeting the bar, we're talking about leaping over it, we're talking about actually going further. We're talking about excellence, a big word. And you're not gonna get a second slide on this one, you know why? It's a very difficult, end. I mean it's a very difficult question. I'm gonna leave that question for you guys. I'm not even gonna try to pretend like I know how to achieve it. Because it's a day in, day out, questioning approach. You ask yourself, every day, what is excellence to you? That to me is the only way that we can get to the answer to that question. Seriously, ask yourself, starting Monday, put everything as a side. I have fires I have to fight, I have bugs I have to fix, I have a long piece of code I don't wanna write, I have things I don't want to do, I have people didn't like what I was doing, I have arguments with other people. Put everything as a side. Ask yourself, with all those condi conditions, what is excellence in my job? You don't have time to waste. Forget about the company for a second. You've got only one life. There's only a current moment. Do you really want to waste it? 
So why not do the best you can? I'm not preaching here. You guys are doing that already. I'm just reiterating what I see from you guys. This is not an answer to that. But I, I want you to read that for a second, if you don't mind. Because it was, it was helpful for me. Again, please don't answer that question. It is a living question. But I think it's, um, it helps. I'm just going to read it. So, the will to win, desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential. These are the keys that would unlock the door to excellence. Each one of these were translated, of course, from Chinese, and each one of those words actually has special meanings. If anybody knows kanji or Chinese, I, I, I advise you to go back to look at original meaning because there are deeper meanings for it. But you know what's funny is with all that it's said um, about engineering and software engineering, it actually brings us back to why the hell we're here. This is a big part of it. Remember I mentioned about sharing, thinking together, working together, finding what this excellence is all about together? This is why we're here, if you ask me, right? We're, and I, I want to thank the organizers team and everybody else participating, all the speakers and everybody else. I'll have another slide to talk about that, but a lot of people putting a lot of effort into this engineering conference, and this is not the only one. We're going to have more. It's really to, to remind ourselves and to cultivate and re-energize the whole group about this attitude towards excellence in engineering, which is a living question again. It's not something easily answered. It's a day-in, day-out question. But this is our, one of the channels, one of the ways of our attempt to actually get towards that. And one thing is not enough. This alone is not enough. But it's one of the ways that we think it's absolutely necessary. So what is the engineering conference? Why are we trying to do this, right? It's, I think, laid out pretty easily with those four things, which is, you know, to share. We share our information, right, uh, information. So, it, and it has to be in a certain way that it does not compromise, of course, our contract with our customers. So we have to be very careful about what we share. But there is a certain good set of knowledge that we can exchange about engineering with other people. We learn from each other. I'm learning from everybody. I am. It's, it's, it's amazing how much I actually, I looked at the deck of slides because I reviewed it with the organizers. I was having fun reviewing it. It was early in the morning, every 7 o'clock every morning, review with slides. Sergey's smiling now. But every time I go through the slides, I was like, wow, that's interesting. The material is so important. Exchange. Please, don't just go to the session, but get together and communicate and talk. Exchange, right? Otherwise, it's, ha, ah, it's fun, okay, forget about it. No, it, it has to have some continuity. And that leads us to a community. It leads us to something that could be formed and hopefully would follow us throughout, right? A little bit about the format itself, right? This is not the first engineering conference we have, but the format is changing a little bit. The idea is that instead of having one big one and we shipped everybody over, we're too big for that now. There's no way we can have 10,000 people actually in one conference room. It's just not possible. We're beyond that. It's a good thing because I want more attention here in your office. I want more attention in each one of the offices. So we changed the format so that it's a joint venture effort between GDO and CTO office. Your local offices did a lot of work to make this happen. Thank those guys. And we basically stream it out live to everybody so that it's local here in the office execute, but it, part it involves everybody else in the entire office, right? And the next one that we're going to have, so we're going to have one per season, if you will. So this is fall, right? So we're going to do one in winter. I thought we are going to skip winter, but we're going to do one in winter time, mint time. Most likely it's going to be in Minsk, and we're going to do another one in Budapest and so on, rotate. We're going to do one in Russia. We're going to do one in the U.S., right, or Canada, right, one of the two. And, and then uh, we're going to rotate amongst these different offices, and we're going to come back and, and do another one here. Let's talk about today. Actually, I'm still pumped about yesterday, but let's talk about today, right, specifically about these two days, these two events. We have over 53 speakers. Everybody worked very hard to build the material. Two days of events, right? Five different tracks, and we're talking about expanding it to eight different tracks, including business, including other areas. And we have over 40 sessions. 
a big deal. Lots of information, and we recorded everything so that in case you miss any sessions, you can always go back to scc.epam.com and to, and to actually pick up on it. I'm very proud to say that we're, you see, you can't, even EPAM itself is not big enough to actually incorporate all this information. We have to incorporate, we have to have exchange with outside the company as well. And this is our attempt that we start bringing in, you know, our partners, our friends to work with us, come in to speak about their good work so we can learn from them as well. So I'm very proud to say, and, and, and I really appreciate the people that actually came from Concurrent, from Gigaspace, and VisiQuate, they're here. Thank you so much for coming here and you know, speaking to my team. I think that's the kind of exchange that's really gonna take this company to the next level, All right? So if it's so good, why stop, All right? Don't stop, that's not the whole purpose. I don't wanna create one event and very exciting and then eh, nothing happened, go back to work and then another event. We, we wanna create a thread to connect these different events. So we have one event, and we're gonna create these, you know, I, we're calling it follow the speakers, which is we're gonna have forums created for each and every speaker so that you can continue to ask them questions. You can continue to exchange with them and hopefully it will form and turn to something better. So I call the speakers gravity, if you will. And if it's, it's like, you know, they're the center of gravity and they would start to attract more and more people until it forms, you know, a group of people that maybe it would become something even bigger. And so that, forms a, some kind of continuity. And we also have these webinars for sessions. We have a lot of sessions that we couldn't cover here at the show. Some of them, the format doesn't match. Some of them because we ran out of time. Some of it is just because we have too many sessions already. We can't fit in two days. So we're going to have webinars as well, right? Some of them is a repeat, an extended version of what we had, you know, here these two days. Some of them would be totally different material. But you're going to see these webinars as well form under the same circle, and for the one that people are interested in, we will have a live session, we can extend it and go on. And I'm always listening. I'm always listening. I, I think there was nothing more important than this last point, which is this, this whole event and more, a hackathon, other things that we're creating, it's, it's all for you guys, right? And I hope you guys understand this. And if you guys don't participate, it's absolutely pointless, right? So I need to hear from you guys. If you guys can let us know, email us, post comments, even this session, if you can post you know, comments to the session, anywhere, any way you can find to give us some feedback, I would really appreciate it. Without that, without that, there is no way we can improve this. I, I have uh, three slides, and I think I missed a few people. These are all the people who actually participated involved in helping, you know, creating this event. It's a lot of people. Some of them, you know, worked on it over hours on their own time. Some of these people, I don't want to show just one slide for too long. I'm sorry, I'm trying to count and make sure it's a little bit even and fair to people, but a lot of people were involved in it. I don't know if you guys know, the team built their own video streaming system. The system, the live system that you guys used yesterday to watch the events are now online, watching the event, built here at EPAM system, right? So. The mobile application that some of you looked at, right? You guys tried out. You can comment and send feedbacks back and forth. That's built here at the you know, Mobile Competency Center. We're going to have more and more of these tools. We're going to invest more and more into it. And then a few more people here as well. Anyway, you have access to this DECA slide, and you can know who they are. Reach out to them. Last but not least. You guys know this is the 20th, we're coming up to the 20th birthday, right? I need your help. I need you to do me a favor, say happy birthday EPAM as loud as you could. Don't worry about the neighbors, don't worry about everybody else. I want you to scream out of the top of your lungs, you know, really say it. Say happy birthday EPAM and I would use it in a couple of places but I need you to say it, okay? When I say one, two, three, Say it. One, two, three. Very good. Very good. That's what I'm looking for. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, folks, I'm taking up too much of your time. The whole point of this session is really to explain to you the whole concept 
I want you guys, and thank you so much for coming you know, on a Saturday too. And the whole point is I want you guys to participate. Come and speak to us. Let us know what you need. Let us know what you want to see more. And, and enjoy the rest of the day.